Hi, Amy. Good morning. How are you? Morning, Dave. I'm doing well, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, good, good. Yes, uh, uh, sun is shining, although I've um, closed the shutters, uh, so um, maybe I'm not so righteous today. I don't know. You can only make that joke so many weeks. Then. Every time. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Uh, <laughs> when I was a curate, I was pulled up on this. Uh, every time I led a service, uh, I talked about the weather. Did you Literally, that was my opening line about, you know, so whatever the weather was outside, that would be part of my welcome. Wow. And so my trainee incumbent, as part of one of our reviews as supervisor, he said, <laughs> Dave, I just want to pick you up on this. <laughs> every, single time, every single time you talk about the weather. Were you aware that you were doing that or was that one of those things you were surprised? Well, I, think you know? I think it's just, you know, because you appreciate that people have come from their homes, to come to church and they've experienced what the weather's like. So, you know, I, I yeah. love it. So uh, anyway, um, oh, sure. so yeah, so uh, had a good, a good, good morning and uh, yeah, been, been, been quite good. Yeah, one morning prayer. We're almost finished Revelation. By the next time we talk for our Tuesday chats, we won't be doing Revelation anymore because we must be finishing this week. You know? No, but we, I did, I did, I did say to them. I had some new people on this morning, and like <laughs> I did say to them, look, it's just we're nearly there. You know, yeah, this is the final battle. Okay, yeah. so when we get to Revelation twenty-one, which is tomorrow, uh, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but people people do. I mean, yeah, I don't know, but people do. You know, so if you and I ask them if you've got any questions, message me. We'll have a chat uh, because people will have questions about some of the imagery, some of the numbers, some of the what's 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 going on. Um, is it literal? Is it what is it? Yeah, so, um, I didn't so, think because we've kind of been given this caveat the whole way through Revelation of you know some people have tried to play the game we're not getting into that it's not what morning prayers about and i said look today's chapter is one of those chapters where people have a field day with like what are these years what are these symbols i said we're not interested if you want that chat go somewhere else do you know in the sense of what we want to see from this is god wins an end is coming let's move on you know uh, yeah yeah and just and just to speak to we are going through tribulation yeah. Even now, I mean, whatever, whatever you view is, whether it's pre-millennial, post-millennial, pan-millennial, whatever, you, whatever millennial... You just wanted you, to drop those in. <laughs> ...view you have on, on Revelation. I just that language this morning. <laughs> Having gone through morning prayer, I came here to talk about Christmas, not what millennial I want to be. <laughs> but it's true, but people have, people have tried to, I don't know, I said, look, some of this is a mystery. And my, that was my first comment on the Revelation reading. Some of this, we do not know what John is talking about. Do you know? Anyway, what, what, apart, apart from muddling through the book of Revelation, <laughs> uh, what has made you smile this week, Amy? We always open up with that. Yeah. I think on one level, one thing that's like, in an ironic made me laugh or so, just when we're talking about Revelation, is the thought that goes through my head when we are reading the Revelation reading and you see the number of viewers going up. And I often think, imagine if you'd stumbled across this morning prayer right now, and I'm right, and I'm reading about a beast and about all of the stuff that we. That's kind of every day we'd be chuckle internally, thinking, "Oh, please, like realize this is scripture, and not just me having a total mental moment of prophecy or whatever." Um, so that's kind of made me laugh all week as we've done these kind of difficult chapters of Revelation. Like, what does it look like to just watch this for the first time? Um, yeah, it's been an interesting week. Lots of kind of really lovely news has come through from friends, which has made me kind of smile or like long stories of maybe unanswered feeling prayers that had gone unanswered that have come through. I think it's been a real week of, um, and because it's their different people's stories are not mine, I won't go into detail, but just that kind of reminder all through the week really of it can seem we're in a tough place. Maybe we're praying for answers for something. Um, but God is a God who works through in his timing and really, I guess, the, the call to trust and wait. And we looked at Zechariah and Elizabeth on Sunday at St. Luke's and that promise of waiting and wondering and God answering prayer. So I think, yeah, there's been lots of things this week where smiled and then maybe reflected on God's goodness, but needing to be patient and enduring and to keep praying in those things yeah what about you what's made you smile or laugh this week uh 
last night, I mean, this is the most recent thing. We, we, we usually have a civic carol service at St. John's in Stratford, big church in Stratford, uh, to bring all the, uh, maybe the local authority, the police, the, the business leaders, just to say thank you. Uh, and uh, so, but obviously we couldn't do it this year. So uh, we're having an online version, a virtual carol service, and uh, we're just putting things together. And I got given the, the role of saying the benediction, the closing Christmas blessing. Yeah. Uh, and so, so, and it was thought a good idea that we do this outside in the community in the dark uh, and look at and, and where we are by the docks. So our videographer, Jeremy, lovely guy, brought all his gear around. We set it all up here. So we had two lots of everything, one lot of lights on two cameras. And we went on tour of the dock. And um, this benediction is 30 seconds. If that. That's it. If that. I mean, I was very measured in my, in my delivery. So, oh, I'm sure you um, were. Practice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> however, it's because um, we, know, we know this, because anyone of us has yeah. been filming, we know that actually we either do it different takes. And mm -hmm. different. So we were out for three hours um to do 30 seconds or we were no we were together three hours to do 30 okay. yeah, yeah. um and uh and and we had all sorts of weather uh it was calm to begin with we went up on the footbridge uh it was really windy i don't think we've got much up there to be honest and we wanted to get canary wharf in the background uh we're over by millennium mills you know the old the old industrial yeah. thing so job. yeah so it was um but but i think in the end we got enough uh we got enough footage and uh, then we came back, we came back to where you know, my house is, and we had to walk through that, the allotments, the alleyway. And um, Jeremy said, actually, I do want, just want a bit of greenery. I was going to go in your garden, but actually this is a bush here. And, all, and I said, oh, there's a shopping trolley hanging up on the fence. He said, perfect. And so this is probably the best take of, of, a, of sort of natural uh, plus urban, all in one corner. And, so, uh, and, then, and then I had to walk up and down the alley a couple of times uh so he said i might fit that in so um so yeah so it just just made it smile and like just but it's we're committed to making this you know the, a, a good experience for people it's going to be online so um yeah i'll be interested to see what that looks like i'm excited that you know i might even watch parts you of the carol it, show the it. It. The school children do the carol lovely the bishops doing a talk you know you might want to listen to that might learn something um wow. Wow, wow. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure you should be selling the carol services, the potential parts you might want to watch. I love no, it's, that. It's all good. We got, it's, it, we're going to make it so it's, it's all That's good lovely. quality. And, uh, and you know, want to make it as, you know, spend three hours for 30 seconds. And, and if that's the commitment that people are putting in, you know. It's, it's probably uh, worth saying, this is not Ascension's carol service. This is for an organisation you're part of. Transform, so Newham. Transform Newham, yeah. So, which, which has for the past two years, I think on a civic carol service so if that's tradition i don't know is it we've done it once steve it was cancelled last year because of the election two then oh wow so it's once yeah it's not even tradition is it no really? but that's, it's lovely that you're all putting it together you know with a videographer <laughs> anyway we're, we're clear, it's so fantastic it's i look forward to if i've got time finding a way to watch it you know you you watch it. It'll, it'll be it'll be there whenever you want it. I mean, it was like you know. Hopefully, it's going to be there when when. But we yeah, as we premiere these things, don't we? But yeah. Anyway, we're here to 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 read the you know, to review this the next two chapters yeah. that we've looked at. Uh, and um, you know, it's never too late. And worship works wonders are the two chapters we looked at. Hopefully, they are yeah. um, this week. Amy, what do you want to? What do you want to? your first stab at uh, a statement about this what, what you read yeah i just loved the um these chapters that kind of encouragement of yeah the first chapter we read this week it's never too late you know there are and it's um, a phrase that i use often in preaching it's a phrase and a reality we've both known in pastoral ministry it's never too late to come to know jesus you know the the people the first person i, I baptized at um ascension you know into their 80s it's never yeah. too late to come to know jesus it's an amazing um truth that it's not about getting in early 
you know, why we want to come to know Jesus whenever we come to know him, but actually no one is excluded. And Max Licado talks about, um, you know, a deathbed coming to know Jesus and what that looks like. Um, but really, what's that got to do with Christmas? Well, Max Licado is looking at the idea of there are some people who miss the opportunity to come to know, to come to be part of the story. And he spends a bit of time thinking about the innkeeper, yeah. the door that was knocked and wasn't opened. I don't know, in the sense of Bethlehem was clearly busy. They were ready for the census. People had traveled to do the paperwork that was necessary. Um, hotels, Airbnbs, they're all sold out. There's no room in the Premier Inn. There's no room anywhere. It's quite strange to imagine a woman turning up literally about to drop a baby and still there was no sofa available anywhere. And Max Licado was kind of looking at this. Was it that they arrived too late? Was there already enough of a scandal around what was going on? Like, why was there no space made? And actually looking at whoever this innkeeper is, and of course, they're not mentioned in any detail in the biblical narrative, but a door was knocked, it wasn't opened, they weren't received into a home. And actually, where do we miss out on the knock or you know where are our homes too busy at christmas i don't know about you but sometimes we can be watching tv here or have music on and you have that moment of was that the doorbell and it's like oh no it probably wasn't or there's times where you have headphones in so you don't hear when someone's at the door you miss out on the the delivery or the package or you know um that encouragement of the innkeeper failed to see what was happening in that moment and misses out actually, where do we need to make space? Where do we need to quiet the noise in order to hear the knock at our door? The yeah. knock of Christ to come into our Christmas. So yeah, that was the first bit that jumped out for me. What about you? It's great. I, I, it's, it's, it's where I would have started. I mean, I, 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 as I was reading this, I remember I went to a, a conference in uh, Copenhagen once. Well, actually, I, I wasn't at the conference. I went for a meeting. But okay. the whole of literally the whole of Copenhagen, you know, 10,000 city people from all over Europe was descending on Copenhagen for this conference. And I was asked to go to a meeting at late notice yeah. and book a hotel. And could you, could you think I found one? Yeah. Uh, the only hotel I found was a five-star hotel, <laughs> but a really small room in a five-star hotel. It looks like a broom cupboard. Uh, and it doubled the price as well, uh, and so so I just remember I remember that you know, I remember that my my experience of some somewhere that was so busy they were coming for the census and yeah. nowhere close. I also thought, hold on a minute, Joseph must have had some of his family still oh, there. Completely. Yeah. So where were they? <laughs> and I'm thinking I'm just thinking practically through this. Hmm. Um, I, I'm also thinking about my my experience of here. Uh, and, and maybe you've got that experience so far of actually sometimes we had a hard day and we dread the knock at the door. Right. Actually, we, we, cause we know that it's likely going to be, uh, it is likely going to be someone in need and we, we have to deal with some uh, difficult situation. Uh, and I, I'm just wondering that's, that that's a view as well, that maybe we, 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 we know that Jesus is going to be knocking. We know that, that, but we, we dread it because, we have to face up to certain things uh, and, and maybe our life needs to change and we don't want to uh, mm -hmm. and maybe life's too difficult that we we want to answer the door so you spoke earlier about the noise maybe bringing the noise down i think sometimes there's the fear of, of answering the door about what that might what that might mean i know when i was we were asking my first, eldest daughter to be baptized and and the vicar at the time says dave i think you should be as well and i was fear came through me of thinking my life my, my life has got to change and of course yes it did and, and 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 i look back and thinking i'm so glad it did but it's taken that that first step and actually that um i mean i did laugh about the the uh the uh the little anecdote that he had uh about um about the shop and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah about the christmas present for his wife uh, and the fact that they actually just reminding and reminding and, and little nudge here, little nudge there, and, uh, and, and maybe that, that's what we need, more than one nudge. And that, that really talks about our roles, not just as, as Christian leaders, but also as just followers of Christ, is actually helping that nudge uh, and getting people to open the door. Um, and dare I say, Amy, we live, in a, we live in an area of maybe East London where people don't want to open their door. 
uh, their door is firmly locked and firmly shut. Um, and, that, and, that, and that, in a practical way, leads to, leads to difficulties. So I just want to extend on what you said, because I think it, was, it certainly spoke a number of levels at me, uh, uh, but particularly, you know, there, there is also fear of opening the door. And, um, you know, but as you say, it's never too late. Yeah. Where, where else did you go with this? I think that you were saying that around not wanting to open the door because fear of what, not also um, what will I find on the other side, which perhaps was what the innkeeper was thinking, but also Max Licado was on to at this point about not wanting percep perhaps ourselves to be seen in that because he's talking about, and as you were talking about, you know, your fear around that conversation of your own baptism and what that would look like. So now where Max Licado finishes the chapter by saying, you know, Jesus comes with a list of things he's already done, not, yeah. not with what he's asking us to do. And, you know, in that sense of, you know, Jesus comes not with a list of things for you to do, but a list of things he's already done and will do. Jesus lifts, Jesus lifts burdens. He doesn't add to them. Just that idea of, and Max Licado lists a whole, you know, list of people, you know, Abraham was old, God still led him, Moses was retired, God still called him, Jonah was on the run, God still used him, Jacob cheated his family, God still, you know, this whole story of no matter where we, what we think of ourselves doesn't disqualify us because it's never too late to accept Jesus into that place, to, to, to welcome him in, to make space for him. And I guess there's that real time around Christmas, around Advent, around some of the traditions around Christingo or carol services that people perhaps might come to that wouldn't come to any other part of this. You know, there's a real chance, there's an openness if you're willing to open your heart to hear the, the doorbell or the knock to be like, there's something in this. I need to think about it a bit more. Do you know? Yeah, no, 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 ab ab absolutely. Um, <clears throat> it'll, it'll, and because we're, we're living in a time where we, we can't necessarily, don't necessarily do all those things that are, that are normal, but, um, but maybe these are times where people do actually question uh, about their life, about their faith, about what's important. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and it is yeah, never too late. And I've had conversations with people, again, not, not really linked to the church at all, but actually saying, actually, even some of the local people in the shops, you yeah. know, started to read the Bible. I mean, never read the Bible in, in their life. And then, wow. Yeah, it's he, yeah, um, up, you, Dave? yeah, I mean, uh, uh, in the next chapter, he, he talks about uh, uh, worship works wonders. And one, one of the things that um, very clearly on it says, because there, there are maybe people's views where actually um, I don't worship. I mean, they'll come out with that and say, well, actually, everyone worships someone or something. Right. And I think, that, that, I think that's the start, really. So it's actually we're... we're we are made we are made with something inside us that actually worships now mm -hmm. there's the problem is that uh, if that's not uh, that people will worship things that maybe they shouldn't worship right uh, and uh, and because in the old testament we have those lists of of, of basically idols things that were made uh, that they worshiped uh, but actually today uh, it's not necessarily those those statues or whatever it's actually things like celebrity like money uh, like our careers mm. um, and and that's you know for a lot of people that's the focus of their worship that's what they spend time and focus and energy on uh, that's the focus of their life mm. um, and even and even things like you know the, their career of course you want you want to be you want to have a good career you want to sort of you know grow in your career and get on um, but to the expense of everything else right. you know um, I, I, I heard a story very recently, somewhere very close to home, where uh, their son was was getting on in the world and um, um, still living at home, mm. and literally had invested all his time, all his energy, all his money uh, into making sure that he, you know, got on in that. Kid. But what was happening is that we, he was doing it at the expense of his family, uh, expense of everything else. He said, "No, I just need to be yeah, just yeah. Need to be focused on my career." Uh, and so, yeah, that, that very, very clearly spoke to me about the danger of, of, of misguided, so I was misguided worship. I suppose. What, what about you? Yeah, I found it really interesting. Kind of the chapter starts by looking at the, the worship of the angels. That's the kind of the link into the Christmas story of, um, you know, Mary has this baby and heaven erupts in this choir of angels that sing to the shepherds, that sing 
glory to God, Hosanna in the highest. Um, and it's interesting, Max kind of saying, could they not have done something a bit more useful <laughs> in the sense of Mary maybe needed a bed, Joseph maybe needed an escort, you know, Jesus needed a basket to be laid in. And yet, what did the angels do? They sang the most incredible song of praise. And, you know, Christmas is such a time of like writing lists of things that need to be done, of chaos, of trying to some sort of order. It's not really a time where you've got a lot of time to do things that are not especially essential. And actually, like, there's this reminder of, it reminded me of the story in the Gospels of Mary and Martha. Like, what's the essential thing to do at this point? It's to spend time in worship at the feet of Jesus, to sing of his praise, rather than rushing around trying to find a turkey or organize which people can be in your household for, do you know, actually, what is the space amidst the chaos to do what isn't the most useful thing, but the only necessary thing, which is to worship at the feet of the King of Kings. Um, And then that leads into this discussion around what is worship? What does that look like? But the angels have a beautiful song to sing. You know, it's one of these kind of, I guess, scandals of the story that it's not to kings and queens the angels sing. It's to these overlooked, rejected shepherds. You know, they hear the most beautiful choir of heaven sing this news just in worship, just a declaration that God is here. Glory to God. Hosanna. That the one who saves has come. Um, And it just kind of has got me thinking as I read the book a couple of days ago, where is there space in this Advent for just wonder and worship and awe? Um, You know, you know, Christmas is probably the busiest time of year along with Easter for clergy. You know, it's a total um, chaotic time of preparing for services, doing extra stuff in schools. You know, it's just such a busy season, but actually, before we even think about what it means to lead others in that space, where will there be time this Advent, this Christmas, for me, for you to just worship, wonder, awe and praise around everything else that might seem more useful? How do we line up with what is the essential first and just to give God reverence and glory and praise? Um, yeah, that really struck with me this week. Yeah, no, it's, um, it is the age old, thing at Christmas is that we we look forward to the rest after right yet we don't make time for the rest while we, while, while it's going through the season uh, and, and rest and wait through Advent and, and worship um, you know it's uh, and I love the bit where he, he talks about what what worship is uh, and, and how worship should be should be done and because and, uh, choir of angels so plural Okay, and that means together. Uh, and, and of course, that we've been tested recently about what does worship in community mean, right? Uh, uh, for for the church, because we've been uh, distanced, we've been in lockdown, we've been separated physically. Um, but I do get a great sense that uh, you know, you know, people ask me, you know, can I be a Christian and not go to church? No, because uh, part of the focus of our life is worshiping together. Uh, as a community and what that looks like. And I, I love the bit that he, he actually makes that clear. Yeah. Take it from uh, Luke 2, a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. Uh, and, and of course, we've been going through the book of Revelation uh, and we're coming to the bit very soon uh, um, where it's all being made new and, and the new heaven and the new earth and the eternal song uh, of the angels and us uh, worshiping God. Uh, and it's a great vision. Uh, and, uh, and and sadly, people don't always get that, the idea of actually, no, it's, it's good for us that we worship together uh, in community, um, uh, uh, builds each other up, uh, and so, and encourages one another as well. And I think that, that's, that's certainly it. So I, I certainly like the bit where he, he, he picks, up on, picks up on that, the, uh, we're worshiping like the angels. And if you, if you say that to people, they'll say, oh, right, I never thought of that. Um, but uh, now I've heard people sing and certainly not uh, worshiping like the angels, uh, not all of them anyway. Um, but but their, their voices, <clears throat> is, yep. their voice isn't the issue, it's the focus of their worship. That's right. the issue. Um, and that, and that, and that's, that's it. So, so yeah, so I, I certainly picked up, picked up on that. And, and, you know, you know, we've, we've got to be overtly worshiping, you know, the idea that, um, it's not, not yet. Yeah, something inward is happening, absolutely, and it's it's of the heart. 
mm. but we've got to show it. Uh, and, and I love the bit where he, he talks about what we know uh, in the First World War, that, uh, that the, the battle of people fighting each other, uh, and then this, this Welsh hymn comes out from the German side, and uh, they start singing, and like, they go, oh, wow. And, uh, and for a time, the battle stopped. And I'm just wondering whether our, our, you know, if we worship and, and people know that we're worshiping, maybe some of the battles that we have uh, will stop and people will turn to God. And um, so, uh, so, yeah, it needs to be demonstrable. And that means, that's what you said, demonstrable. But that means also that we, we need to be uh, out there um, in, the, in the community as well as within the church walls. And I think that's where our worship isn't just coming, going to church. Our worship is our life. And, and that's certainly the message that I've been sharing with those at Ascension, particularly as you haven't been able to come to the church building, is actually to see your life as worship. Um, and, so, and that means who, where is your life being focused? Mm. What about you, Amy? Any more? Well, I just, just what you're saying around that worship works wonders, like the battles stop, the walls come down. And, you know, so often I think we feel overwhelmed or stressed. We, there's maybe a temptation from people to, to disengage from stuff, whereas actually what Max Licaro is talking about is when we worship, the battles, as you're saying, become less. You know, he talks at one point about, like, are you stressed? Worship God, for he can store the universe in his pocket, the oceans in an eyedropper. Are you ashamed? Worship Jesus, his love never fades. Are you bereaved? Open your heart to the shepherd. He leads you through a valley of sorrow. Do you feel small? A few moments in front of the throne of your loving king will evaporate any sense of insignificance. Worship works wonders. <clears throat> However we feel today, whatever we're worried about, whatever it is we're trying to find as the source of contentment, you know, you were speaking about what are the things we worship instead, you know, you were speaking about career and uh, money and power. I think one of the huge idols of this time is fulfillment and content, and they're harder to... Um, summarize but it's that feeling of that promise that we all feel that we're owed about if we just have this we will be happy and so the the god becomes that search for that sense of contentment or if i just have this fulfillment and max lacaro starts to talk about that you know that exam that you think when you pass you get the job actually won't fulfill you that thing you're saving up for doesn't fulfill us the perfect christmas dinner is great but just leaves you're still hungry the next day. Do you know, all of these things that we are looking to, to make us happy, to make us content, to be fulfilled, that will somehow reach to that point we can tick the box that says we, we, we were happy. All of these things fall short. And yet it's the lie of culture that if we only had that, we would be content. Whereas actually, it's worship that changes our hearts. It's worship in which we find fulfillment because we... It's, we um, find something different than what we are you know we have access to the king of kings our situations change the battle stops we get a new sense of perspective about how to fight the battle no longer in our own ways or in our own strength but in the king of heaven's strength um yeah and just that real worship works wonders is a great phrase not just because it sounds great but because it's true yeah. and so how do we make space in this advent season in this chaotic christmas season and not for the usual chaos reasons, but for all of the uncertainty and the things, you know, this has been a difficult year, but yeah. how do we worship in a way that will be different? But the words are still true. The hope still goes on. The baby came. He lives among us. God with us, Emmanuel. Um, so yeah, what, what battle, what storm, what situation do we need to find a place of worship in order that we can then continue to fight on, you know? Yeah. And, and and he ends he ends the chapter with something about something of Christmas, uh, the idea of, of gift. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if we wanted to give, uh, you know, Jesus a gift from us uh, to respond to the gift he's given us, it says here, give Jesus the gift the angels gave him. Yeah. The gift of praise. Uh, don the robe of grace, soar on wings of faith, and take your place in the heavenly chorus, and sing glory to God in the highest. Um, you know, powerful stuff, and uh, you know, you know, there is a, there is a song, isn't there? What can I give? Uh, yeah. Give my heart. In the bleak midwinter. Yeah, yeah, in the bleak with, But actually, it's what can I give? Give my praise. Um, give my worship. Um, 
glory to God in the highest. So, mm. so it's great, a great, great way to end um, as we're journeying towards Christmas. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, it's, um, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving the, loving the book, mm. loving the book, loving the Christmas. Um, Do you want to pray for us? Yeah, let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, uh, we do thank you for uh, today, uh, a new day, uh, to praise you, to worship you. We are encouraged uh, that uh, um, these words, it's never too late. That uh, uh, we can journey through life uh, without knowing you, but yet, yet it's never too late to open the door, to let you in to our hearts and to our lives. I pray for those who maybe have the door firmly locked. Uh, through fear or there's so much going on uh, within uh, the family and with the household all the noise of life that you can people cannot hear the door knocking or the bell ringing to let Jesus in Lord I give thanks for worship uh, the ability to come to you uh, to pour out our hearts to pour out our voices to praise your name with the angels uh, and as Amy has said, the angels came uh, not to provide any practical support for Mary, uh, but to give the message of good news to the shepherds, uh, reminding us that this good news is for all people, uh, regardless uh, of age, regardless of background, of gender, of culture, of ethnicity, of religion. Jesus, you came as a baby 2,000 years ago for all of us. May we uh, respond to that gift by praising your name. Glory to God in the highest. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Fantastic. Dave, always great to chat. Yeah, really, really good to chat to you, Amy. And uh, yes, uh, next Tuesday we will have finished Revelation. And uh, Glory to God in the highest. <laughs> to his people on earth. Um, <laughs> Amy, have a, have a great week and uh, we'll chat again uh, next Tuesday. You take care. You too. Bye now.